All righty. Hi, everyone. We're going to get started. Um, welcome. This is Build Fast Data Driven Mobile UI with Xamarin Forms 4.0 and Visual Studio 2019. I am Maddie Legere. I'm a program manager on the Xamarin Forms team. I work on our tooling. I have with me off to the side here the wonderful John Douglas, who owns all of our Android tooling and the Android SDKs, which is a very tough job, and he does a great job at it. Um, how many people here have heard of Xamarin Forms? Okay, good amount. How many people have actually file nude and opened a Xamarin Forms app? How many people are shipping Xamarin apps right now to the store? Wow, very cool. Good showing. So for those of you who don't know what Xamarin Forms is or what Xamarin is in the first place, basically Xamarin is being the ability to use C Sharp and use .NET to write mobile apps for Android and iOS and for Windows. Um, with Xamarin Native, you can do Mac and watches and TVs. It's fantastic. Uh, but the way Xamarin Forms itself, work, itself works is you have your shared C Sharp logic. You have your view models and your your services and all your business logic and all the proprietary stuff. And then you have shared UI code on top of that in XAML. Um, it's a different flavor of XAML than you get with UWP, but it's Xamarin form XAML and it's the same syntax you're used to. Um, and it's open source. It's, it's iOS, Android, and Windows right off the box. And you get a single shared code base. If you need to, you can drill down into the iOS and the Android and the Windows specific stuff and device functionality. but. We have people writing apps with 100% Xamarin Forms and shipping those to the store. So uh, Xamarin Forms 4.0 is coming out in just a couple weeks. And we have a bunch of new features, the first of which makes it very easy to get started styling your apps uh, and doing your navigation and, and searching. It's called Shell. So if you know David Ort now, he's been at the booth this week. This is his baby. He's been working on it for a long time. And Shell lets you set all of your tabs, your flyouts, bottom tabs, top tabs, all that great stuff in a single file. Uh, no weird customizations, no funky stuff that happens in Android that doesn't happen in iOS. It's one UI across both platforms. Um, it also helps with the navigation service. So all the navigation is URI based, makes it really easy to go from page to page and then go back when your user hits the back button or saves. Um, and there's also integrated search handler. And that's uh, very helpful if you are doing a very data-heavy <coughs> app. The second thing is visual. And that actually started in Xamarin Forms 3.6, but we're going to continue to build on it uh, in, in 4.0. And what visual is is the ability to set a design system for your app. So when you go and you create a new page or a new button or a new text box, it's going to look like your brand. Or it's going to look like the same as it would on both platforms. Xamarin was founded on the principle that people want apps to feel like the platform they're on. I have an Android phone because I like how Androids work, and someone has an iPhone because they like how iPhones work. Um, but lately, the past couple of years, we've seen designers come to people with one mock-up and say, give me this on both platforms. And you don't actually want the native controls. So what we did was we bundled visual uh, with material design for 3.6. Uh, so you can actually go in and just change everything in your app to Google's material design language. Uh, David gave a really great talk about this yesterday. And um, there's a lot of documentation on it online. We'll talk about it a little bit more in this, in this talk later on. The final thing that's coming out and a preview with Xamarin Forms 4.0 is collection view. So you might have heard of Android's recycler view. So you know when you have big lists of data, they, have, they load it all up when you load the page, and it's very slow. Basically, what collection view is a more flexible and performa performance alternate to it. So what we're going to do today, uh, John came up with this great app idea. So it's a, it's a texting app for the Avengers. Very timely. No spoilers, I promise, if you haven't seen Endgame yet. Uh, but we're actually going to go from a basic Xamarin Forms template and build in some of, these, the, some of this app. So basically, you can hit the snap button, and it gets rid of half your list. Um, and what we have here is we have a collection view, which I just talked about. This is a shell app, so all this bottom tab and everything comes for free. Very easy to change. Um, and that button, as you can tell, is material design. It's not the, the standard Android button you get when you're building a native app. So getting started, uh, if you've never used Xamarin Forms before or Xamarin in general, you actually just install it as a workload in the Visual Studio installer. So very quick, you click the button. Uh, we've reduced the install size from somewhere over 20 gigs to about 7, which is a huge improvement. Basically, you go in, you type Xamarin or mobile or Xamarin Forms or Android, and mobile app Xamarin Forms pops up. You click on it, and you get a bunch of templates. So 
different styles. Master Detail is your flyout. Tabbed is your tabbed app. Um, blank gives you nothing, just one page with nothing in it, which is great. Uh, and Shell, which is what we'll be using today. You also have the option to pick the platforms you want to target and include ASP.NET Core Web APIs, which will automatically wire everything up to an ASP.NET Core Web API project for you. And James Montemagno will be giving a really good talk about that tomorrow afternoon. So, like I said, four templates, three target platforms. Uh, we've also really increased installation time, solution creation time, and the solution load time. So it's faster than ever to get started with Xamarin Forms. You have no excuses. And we have the new shell template for 4.0. So the way a Xamarin Forms app is structured is basically you have a .NET standard project. And in everything except for the blank forms app, we give you all of the view model set up. So you're welcome to use Prism or any other MVVM framework you've used before in Windows. But we'll give you a very basic one. Um, the app shell XAML file is where all the shell stuff happens. So it's all in one place. And you still have access to those Android and iOS native projects if you need them. The out of the box shell app is actually very similar to the app we were building. So I did cheat a little bit because the template is so good. And you get a list view. Uh, you get to click on it, see details. You can add items. And you can switch to different pages using the tab. And you get that, that basic structure, that basic MVVM structure that we just saw. So all of this data is through a mock data store that comes through a data interface. Um, so building up this app is actually <laughs> really easy. This is the, uh, the much nicer UI that John had given me. And I was like, eh, I can't do that in 20 minutes. But we'll get halfway there. So the mock data uh, is just going to be these chats here. We're just going to switch it from item one to Captain America. Um, we're going to switch the list view out for collection view. So for those of you who are using Xamarin Forms and are using list view right now, I'm going to show you how easy it is to switch that out for collection view. We're going to add a button, make it material, and we're going to build. talk about how we can optimize the build and deploy pipeline. We have like 10 minutes to do all this, so you're going to see how fast it is. So the first thing <laughs> is changing the mock data is literally as easy as changing a string. Um, there's a file, mockdatastore.cs. It's in your services folder with the new template. And you can literally change out first item for Captain America, and that's how easy it is. You hit save, and next time you run it, the, the correct info is going to pop up. The other thing that's really easy to do with the templates is with the data store interface file, we have you know five or six functions, get items, get item, set item, all that. It's super easy to wire that all back up with a different data store or a different data interface to whatever you have running in Azure, um, your core web API project, all that stuff. So that's step one. Told you it was going to be quick. The next thing is lift view to collection view, which is a little bit more complicated. So collection view is very simple. So you can see in the XAML right here, you get to delete a bunch of the old list view stuff. You don't need it anymore. Collection view is smart enough to pull to refresh for you. Um, go ahead. You take out the view cell. So cells and Xamarin forms are just you know containers of other items. Very easy to use. But we don't need it anymore. Collection view is smart enough to live without it. And then you change the selection mode. So with, with collection view, you can have multiple or single items collected, uh, selected or none. So you really control what the user is able to screw up in your app or not. And then all you have to do is change a couple uh, properties because the API is slightly different. And that's it. That's all you have to do to get collection view going. So I think this video was like 40 seconds. That's all it's going to take you. Next, you have to add and style the button. So before I start this video, let's talk a little bit about the UI tools we have in Xamarin Forms. So the first one right here is the Xamarin Forms Previewer. Um, I know there's a love-hate relationship with it, with existing Xamarin Forms devs. And the idea of it is you can do Android and iOS preview right in the IDE. You don't have to hit build. You don't have to wait for it to deploy to your emulator or your device. We put a lot of effort into making it very quick and really support a lot of custom controls. So now we've given you the power to turn off custom controls if, you, if they do break the preview or all that great stuff. The other thing that we shipped in Visual Studio 2019 is this property panel right here. So it's exactly what you expect from the UWP designer. Um, and you can scroll through and actually go ahead and change properties visually so you don't have to remember them or Google the API docs when you, when you get stuck. So here I'm going to add the button. You see it quickly pops up in the previewer. Change some color. This is uh, Thanos, Thanos purple, I called it. Total guesstimate. <laughs> um, change your layout options. So, you know, I, I Xamarin Forms, you use horizontal options and stack layouts to, 
to change where it's positioned, so I just chose end. It didn't really work for me, so I switched it to end and expand, so it really wraps the text nicely. Um, I'm going to change the text color, make it, make it uh, brighter, so it stands out in that nice purple. And I'm going to change some margins as well. Very easy. I'm just tabbing through and scrolling. And then I'm going to add a click handler. Uh, this is going to link to what I call the Thanos algorithm. And because you have all the power of C-sharp with Xamarin Forms, you can do things like do async click handlers. Um, you can do async and await with the display alerts. So this is the same thing when you, when you hit a button and it pops up and it says, no, can't do that, sorry, and you just close right out. Um, you know, the same syntax you're familiar with. It's just C-sharp under the hood. And I'm going to go ahead and wire that up. So that will be the snap. All right, good. So the one thing that I also talked about was material, d uh, material design. So all you have to do is on your XAML page, add visual equals material. You can also do this at the app level. So in shell or uh, at the app.xaml level. You can also do this on the element. So say you only want a particular button to be material. So you can see that the animations are different, the, the borders, and there's a little drop shadow that's really nice. That's all different. And you can also see on the right here, this is iOS material. And on the right of those two, that's Android material. It's the exact same button. So <laughs> the iOS default one has much less padding and also has bright blue text, which is terrible if you do background colors on anything. But now it looks virtually the same across the two platforms, which is huge. So that is all it took <laughs> to build this UI that we talked about at the beginning. Um, pretty simple. The, te the templates are very helpful and give you a lot of stuff right off the bat. And you can snap away half your chats just like that. Um, when it comes to actually building and deploying your apps, we put a bunch of work into making what we call your inner dev loop as fast as possible. So that's when you make a change and you hit run, you wait for it to build, you wait for it to deploy, you see your change, you say, oh, I need to tweak that a little bit, and then you go back into the code and you go through the whole thing again. That is the inner dev loop. And we started with just hammering away at Android build and deploy times. We know that's been a pain point for some of our developers. And we have reduced them a whole bunch. John can talk to you about it forever. <laughs> um, you put a lot of work into it over the past year or so. The next thing is you get even faster builds and smaller APKs, so smaller Android app sizes for your end user with the Android D8 Dexler and R8 Shrinker. So you, if you're big in the Android world, you've probably heard of these already. Um, John has a great blog post up on uh, the Xamarin blog for all the goodies that go into this. The next thing is we're really happy because Android emulators now fully support Hyper-V. So you can manage all your Android emulators inside of Visual Studio. You don't need Android Studio installed. You can manage your SDKs. You can manage your tools. You just click on the buttons, and it, it tells you what you need to install to get everything to work. So with Hyper-V enabled, on even on your Surface Book, I run Hyper-V on my Surface Book, your Android emulators are way faster. And it's, if you don't have an Android device, it's much quicker to build and deploy. The other thing that Xamarin developers love and is a huge feature, um, and it's not new for 2019, but I wanted to call it out. If you have a Mac that you share with you know, your family members or you, know, you keep it in a closet somewhere, you don't have to git push your code up and then git pull your code down on your Mac to run it on iOS. If you connect to your Mac over the network with Xamarin, you, and, and this is all in Visual Studio, you can hit play on Windows. It will call your Mac. It will build your app for you, and it will spin up a simulator for iOS on your Windows machine. So if your Mac is at home and you VPN to it, um, you can still build and deploy and see your iOS app on an iOS simulator on Windows, which is a huge deal. Very exciting. So we also have a bunch of other improvements that didn't really fit into this talk today. But if you're doing Xamarin Android, we've done a lot of work with AXML editing, with the Android Designer, which is our like drag and drop way to build UIs. Uh, Amy over here works on Visual Studio for Mac. They put a lot of work in uh, the C Sharp editor from Visual Studio for Windows is now brought over to Mac. So all the IntelliSense and code refactorings you expect with Xamarin and with ASP.NET and a whole bunch of other stuff, which is great. We've worked a lot on stability for Pair to Mac. So when you're you know, on a corporate network and it's really funky because everyone else you work with is on that corporate network, it works a lot more reliably now. And finally, the XAML Previewer, which I, which I mentioned earlier, lots of uh, reliability work on that as well. 
So we're always listening. We're very active on Twitter. Uh, we're here at Builds. So feel free to stop by and tell us what you want to see in Xamarin Forms, what you want to see in Visual Studio. We have a couple more talks going on this week. So you've missed two, unfortunately, or maybe you've got to see them live. They're both online. You can see the recordings of them. The visual one I mentioned, uh, so if that really interested you, David did a really good deep dive on that yesterday. Right now after this, I believe 6A or 6B upstairs, James Montemagno and Miguel Diacaza, who's the founder of Xamarin and the, the original creator of Mono way back, uh, they're talking about the future of mobile dev. And they're going on for another 40 or so minutes. So feel free to pop up there after this and hear the end of that. James is also interviewing Miguel tonight at the Build Live stage way in the back. So they will be talking about all things mobile dev, which is cool. And then tomorrow, James is going to do a deep dive on that ASP.NET Core Web API project you can add to the Xamarin Forms template. So if you have questions, stop by. We have stickers and pens. Uh, we have 50 monkeys going out in the morning tomorrow. So if you do want a Xamarin monkey, you have to come by early. And up on the side here, I have a bunch of links. So Xamarin.com is how you go and find everything else, basically. But you can go into the docs, get started. You can go into uh, Microsoft Learn, which we're very excited to announce. Microsoft Learn now has a bunch of Xamarin courses. So free to get started and learn. I believe there's nine over nine hours of content for Xamarin Forms right now. So you can do as little or as much of that as you want, but it is totally free. Uh, the code from today is up on my GitHub, Maddie Legere one Snapchat. And Xamarin Forms itself is open source, and they're always looking for contributors. People file issues on that repo all the time, and they're very active in the community. So thank you.